Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Forge Right. It's been quite some time since I've uh, posted a video. I've been so busy. Um, got a lot going on at work at the moment. New project we're getting into after last year's devastating fires down here in the uh, Southwest Nas Wilderness National Park, uh, World Heritage Area. Uh, there's a lot of rebuilding to go on out there, and I'm part of that project. So that's occupying a lot of my time. I've also had a fair bit to do around here. I've been building a new extension out over the uh, initial garage to uh, house my GTS. I've got my old HQ ute sitting in here, uh, my pride and joy project, uh, but my daily drive, which is GTS, it sits out the front there. It wasn't secured, so I've built a new extension over there with a roller door and um, that's taken up a lot of my time as well. I had to plumb it up to the uh, drain, plumb the draining system up to the council stormwater outlets and things like that. So a bit of tricky time there doing that. Um, I've also had to install a warm air transfer system in my house. Um, gets pretty cold here in winter and we've been experiencing that over the last few months and uh, we've got a wood heater and a heat pump, uh, but they're up one end of the house and the bedrooms get very cold at night. And so I've been up in the roof of the old 1910 Federation Cottage um, installing this transfer, warm air transfer system. So breathing in 114-year-old dust, um, crawling around on my hands and knees. So that was fun. Anyway, um, I'm in the workshop today, not doing any forging. I've uh, purchased a couple of new toys and I'm trying to set up my workshop to uh, be able to use those. I'll show some footage of what I've purchased and how I'm putting it together. So one thing I've got here, I've purchased a plasma cutter. It's a three in one cheap Chinese job, but uh, should do the job for what I need. Um, it's a Rossi three-in-one stick, TIG, and plasma. So I need, mostly I'll be using it for uh, the plasma cutting. I wanted it to be able to do the cutting for my new coal forge, which I've mentioned in my previous videos that I'm going to be constructing. I've got pretty much all of the materials together for that now. I've got my steel stacked over there for um, the framing and for steel sheet for making my hood and table. I've got the thicker steel for my fire pot. I've got pipes to make the twier and the ash dump so on and so forth. I've got a blower. I bought a second-hand jumping castle blower, which is rather a big unit, uh, but it was only 40 bucks. Got it off Gumtree. Guys in America probably just haven't heard of Gumtree, but it's a second-hand buy and sell site um, that you just download the app or go on the internet and post an ad for free and purchase things so i got that for 40 dollars probably a 230 240 dollar unit new seems to run very well i'll be housing that outside in a uh, purpose-built uh, little house for it to reduce the noise i've got a whole bunch of bricks that i'll make a little, a little brick house to sound to reduce the sound and i'll plumb that inside and put that into the the forge so i wanted the plasma cutter for that project, got that now. So now I'm having to reroute a lot of gas lines, not gas lines, sorry, reroute a lot of air lines. I've got underneath here, I've got my air compressor and um, I'm having my plasma cutter over the other side of the shop. So I'm not impressed that I, because of the layout of the, the building, I'm not impressed that I have to run the, the air so far before getting to my plasma cutter, because the further you run it through the pipe, obviously the less pressure you get at the end, um, and the less uh, the more possibility of getting um, moisture 
within the pipe. The air gets hot as it runs through. So various reasons I didn't re I wouldn't really do it that way if I didn't have to, but that's the way my workshop is set up. So that's the way I'm going to be doing it. So I purchased this device here, which has a no name type box. It's a reasonably cheap brand, but I think you can see what I've got here. It's a oil and moisture trap with a regulator built in on top. So I'm just there, that's just screwed in there. Um, testing out the way I'm going to go about putting this together. So here we have just a quick release air, which I'm going to put into there so I can just plug my hose straight into that. That'll be mounted to the wall up high. Then I've got a junction, which that will, I've got an adapter to go in, in there. When I find it again, uh, that'll effectively come off here. So I'll be able to run the air to my plasma cutter up and over and around and down to that side of the shop and air to my standard flexible type hose to, you know, uh, pump up tires or blow down various items in the, in the workshop, um, run pneumatic tools, uh, compression, air compressed tools, impact drivers, things like that, spray guns. Um, the reason I got a three in one, not just a TIG, sorry, not just a plasma cutter, I wanted the TIG as well. I didn't really want the arc welder because I've got a MIG welder over there that has an arc welder to it, and I've got a standalone arc welder. So I've now got three arc welders, but you can't seem to buy a, a plasma cutter TIG welder that doesn't have arc with it. So the reason I wanted the TIG was because I've got my old car over there, um, the 72 HQ Holden Ute, which is a project for me. It, I take it out, I use it when I need to, but some stage down the line, I will be uh, canceling the registration on it and stripping it down, doing a rebuild on it. There's some rust in it, some panel work that I have to, to do. So I'll be cutting that out and welding new panels in. Uh, Whenever you do that sort of job, you always find that somebody's been at it with bog. I, when I bought it, I went over it with a magnet to make sure that, you know, there was no bog. There was a couple of spots in the door where I could see that there was, oh, I could feel that there was a little bit less magnet, magnetization. So there's obviously a smear of a bit of putty bog in there. So I'll be stripping it all back, cutting all that out and TIG welding in new panels, grinding it back and getting that all set up. So. Anyway, I will show some footage of my new welder and plasma cutter. And uh, once I put this in place, run my hoses around and get her all set up, I'll show you the results. Okay, catch you later. Okay, let's try and put this thing together, eh? Um, okay, so. That's coming out of there. So first thing I want to do is take these really rather crappy fittings and whack that one in there straight up. They're not quality by any means. Parks and Wildlife don't pay very much. So I'm generally getting the cheapest items I can get without... No, I shouldn't say that. I'm getting the second level of cheap. I've learnt a long time ago that you don't buy the cheapest unless it's on sale or it's a... Um, I don't know, ridiculously priced quality item that for some reason somebody's selling cheap. Um, you go to the next level at least because at least then you're getting something that isn't going to die in the ass. 
the first time you use it or even worse still not work at all so I um, I've purchased the second cheapest fittings that I could get for this and uh, hopefully they won't destroy themselves as I'm putting them together as you can be see by one of these fittings that I used tried to use when I was building my gas forge I think you can see that if it focuses um, the end of this thread here is just so chewed out it didn't go in straight the first time they have some pretty rough edges on here didn't go in straight when I tried to pull it back out it just tore it to pieces so that's garbage as is that one chewed apart I bought about a dozen a pack of about a dozen of these things and I think I got two three four that I could use these are a couple of the the ones that aren't so great but better than those ones over there and better the ones that I've thrown in the bin when I first started trying to put me forge together so that'll sort that yeah I know I'm making excuses for buying cheap shit but you may call them excuses I call them reasons lack of money one day I might win the lottery and buy all the good gear that I wish I'd been able to afford over the last lifetime I do draw the line on cheapness quite often actually um, some things cheaps good if it's got moving parts or electronics <laughs> I don't go cheap Oh, I shouldn't say that I just bought a cheap plasma cutter didn't I but it was a $1,200 machine which I bought on one of those click frenzies so I wouldn't say you know dirt cheap um, I got it at about 30% of the price so I did all right it was $400 so I think that's pretty good value for a $1,200 machine that you would buy, pay for in the shop. But I do understand that, you know, you can pay a hell of a lot more than that for a really good machine. And the TIG is only, it hasn't got alternative current. It's just DC direct current. So aluminium welding won't be happening. Um, I don't do a lot of that so I didn't think it was all that necessary okay so that should sort that bit out um, comes with a um, <laughs> brain fade um, pressure gauge so one of the things you get when you buy cheap cheap items you probably can't see it there but the back of the pressure gauge is going to come very close to there so when I screw that down I can only go to there otherwise it's going to come up against there and I'm not going to be able to turn that to pull it apart to for this one put oil in it to oil um, tools so I'm gonna to have to put a lot of tape on there so that it tightens up by there obviously one more turn so it's up the right way that's as far as I can go so ideally I'd like it to stop about there so I have how many turns do I have half one one and a half two two and a half three turns is all I get out of that will be about my maximum so that I can get um, good seal but 
not have it go up against the housing of the oil reservoir. So I'm not sure how many of these to put on. Didn't feel all that tight, so I better put a few rounds. If it needs more, I'll put more on it. But like I say, I've only got three turns available to me, so if I start about there, Well, I've obviously got enough on there to be able to make sure it is going to get a grip. But be careful with this stuff if you have it dangling off, off inside, you can easily, quite easily get it to um, block your hole. Hmm. Okay, hopefully that will now get a thread. I've taken enough of it just to get a start on the thread. And hopefully nothing blocking the hole. So I'll give that another go. There we go. I think that's one, two... Three. I might have to put some more tape on there. That's oh, I've got another turn. Nah. Yeah, that does turn. That does loosen. But I'm still going to need another round of tape on there. Or two. I know it's not a very exciting video. I'll probably edit, edit out all this waffling. Oh, you asshole. Oh, no. Me good pink tape's run out. I've got white tape. It's only there, so it'll do the job. I've got some good quality yellow gas tape, but I don't want to use that. Right. That's a bigger layer. Hopefully it won't just cut off. There we go. That's a bit tighter. Screw it on nice and tight till we get to a point. Yeah, that's beautiful and tight where we're. It's better. Upright. Nice and tight. It should do the job for me there. Okay. Now I want to put that one in there. This will be a bit easier. There's a bit more thread to hang on to when I'm pulling it on. Try not to do it too tight at first. See how that goes. Beautiful. Is that the one? No, of course it's not. Uh... All right. It's only a reasonably small air compressor too, so it's not like a, a professional workshop type air compressor. She's only at two and a half horsepower electric 50 litre compressor. So 
nothing special. Right, that's my unit. So when I get my gas connectors like this, imagine that's got a hose hanging off it. They're over there. Um, they now clip into that. Quick release. Clip into that. Quick release. Now I'm going to screw that to a board. I'm going to build it up a bit because nothing worse than having that screwed to there and then no room behind to get your hand and in behind, say, to undo this to be able to drain the water out when you get the water filling up and you can't get your hand in there properly and get around it. Can't get in there to do any work, so I'll build it up with something probably about that thickness to get it away from the wall like that so then I can get my hand in behind it, work away happily. Okay, I'll stop him there. Okay guys, um, sorry about the shaky footage from this point on with this bit, but uh, I've handheld camera at this moment in time so I can take you around and show you what I've done. Um, yeah, so I'll start here. This is my little hidey hole down in here. Pull the bin out. Got my uh, 2.5 horsepower direct drive small uh, air compressor down in here. It's got a regulator on it. Oh, you can't see stuff all, can you? Fair enough. There we go. That's better. As I was saying. So I've got my 2.5 horsepower direct drive air compressor down here. Just an SP job. Uh, 50 litre tank. It's got a regulator on it, but no water trap or anything. Um, so, yeah, just a basic system. Hose comes out. Plenty of play there. It goes up through a hole in the corner there. Up through there, right up to the top, runs along the top of here, trying to fall over. That is my that is my um, moisture trap, oiling unit, unit moisture tra trap that comes from that corner I was pointing out. Runs over across the top of the roller door over there. Got a junction in there, so I'll just set the pressure on that. I did set it when it wasn't attached to anything previously, so I'll just make sure I haven't bumped that and moved it out of place. Goes down to my little retractable coil thing here. It's not real good, not real long, but uh, I might put an extension on that later. And uh, then that runs across the top of there, back over to the top of there, and then down behind that shelving unit there. This is where my forge, coal forge is going to go. So I need to make sure it's out, it's protected up there from the heat and whatnot. Um, but the flue for the forge is going out through the side wall there. I've got, a, it's coming up and I've got a big hood here, it's gonna, going to go here and then, a, 45 degree through the wall, 45 degree and up. Uh, so that's where that will be going. That then comes down behind this wall here and gives me a length of connector pipe here. That, if I can possibly put this down over here, I don't know what sort of view you've got there. I'll start by saying, excuse me, this is along with my uh, MIG welder that I used for I used for making my anvil and the stand and various other things that I've welded up like the table over there and the gas forge the cheap Rossi welder which I'm so pleased with 
other than a few bit small things like this bit of framing casing here that doesn't fit quite right that screw fell out and I got and it lost I lost it so that doesn't fit very well I don't use the handle very much um, the cap fell off there and it's not exactly strong it's liable to fall off one day um, it has the gas guess just the gas inlet there um, basic unit does the job pretty well door opening in there with all of the the welding reel and everything in it so i probably won't get that to click back on again yep there we go um and this is my new plasma cutter tig unit so it's just pretty simple cut stick tig digital readout um if you have it on cut it uses the 10 through to 60 amp for cutting I don't know if you can even see that because of the how close I am for the focus and if you flick it over onto TIG it's got 10 up to 200 for TIG welding so she'll probably live around here somewhere not too often I'll be down oh, although if I'm cutting really thin plate really thin steel i might bring it down here but generally she'll be up here somewhere i reckon um so very it'll be over there for now um pretty cheap torch as you can expect from one of these welders but i've seen a few online videos and they seem to work well it's just a basic button so you can use it like so or like so whichever is convenient for you um, just your, your earth plugs in there so you've just got your uh, power controller there your gas line there around the back we've got a regulator with a I had to buy new clamps because the cheap ass clamps that they put on here were terrible so that just goes on there tightens up I wanted to try I want to try and get a new She's pretty light, so it just moves easy. I think you can see what's going on there. Um, I wanted to get wanted to get another fitting for that, and I might do in the future if I can figure out. I might have to open it up and put a new fitting on there, so I've got a T junction, and I can put either gas in there for my TIG welding, or I can put uh, air in there for my plasma cutting without having to undo this and take it off all the time. So I'll probably put, in the short term, I'll probably put a piece on like this, tighten it right up. That'll be a really short piece with a junction and then put in uh, air from this side, gas from this side, that sort of a scenario. But at the moment, that's the way it is. And just a compressor, sorry, a regulator. I've put a quick hitch in there rather than the... Um, <coughs> Jeez. thought that was the camera then but it was just the gas line the air line so like I say this is the lead that comes out from behind the wall here and that will I think you can see that will just hitch onto there so that's how she'll live I've designed this now so that I've got a power point over here for both the MIG welder runs off this 10 amp power point and I've got a spare power point there for running grinders and things like that angle grinder electric one and over here I've got a this is a, a new plate that I've put on over here I've got the 15 amp and I've just got a plug that comes in here a permanent plug and then a lead that I can pull out and plug into a power point or an extension cord. So I've got uh, 15 amp over here and 10 amp over here. So permanently wired in. I only have one extension cord coming in, which plugs into that. And of course, my gas bottle stand there when I do have the gas. But uh, so that's the unit. 
and uh, for now I'll just poke that back up, up over there I'm gonna have to put a, a hook or something on here a bit of a bit of a place to to hang that I think I might come that way so I'm further away from my gas forge um, I've got a hole in this plate here I might just put a, a large hook on there that I can wind that over so it can live and dangle there quite happily not be on the floor like it is right now ah. but I'll sort that out later so yes that's the basic system there so I'll have my TIG and plasma on that side and my MIG on that side this trolley is really I was so happy I made this trolley it's uh, so good for just wheeling around the workshop I've got the little clip in feet here tray for all my welding gear and accessories plasma accessories TIG accessories wire all sorts of other stuff down in there really handy you can just drag it around the workshop which is why I wanted to just have a single extension cord that comes out to it I can drag it way over here which I'm going to be doing this afternoon I've got to make some gates oh sorry not gates got to make a door a steel door I've got the steel um, this is my new extension out here so there's the old roller door that um, I'll grab my keys so that's the here we go that's the original part of the the garage let me roll the door down there stop him bring it back up again um, so that's what that's what I originally had covered so got the old HQ parked in here to be worked on at some stage this is where I was saying I've got all my steel various steel plate to make my hoods uh, some big thicker steel over there to make the um, fire pot lots of plate lots of lots of bar that's for my forging um, pipe I'm going to make the bottom of my fire pot out of that bit I just put there I'm just gonna have to put that somewhere else but yes my new extension which I've brought out over here now so I'll close that up so the um, garage is nice and secure over there now with the all the important tools in it locks up nicely and I've got this now plumbed up plumbed up wired up with a sensor light in here so that when I it's not dark enough now obviously but uh, when I hit my remote control this is a pretty cruddy old roller door um, bit creaky and the runner on that side is not the right piece it's one that I've made up because they only the people I bought it off only had one um, yeah so it makes those clunky noises at the end because of that roller but I'll, I'll sort that out um, so yeah the new extension that I built so now I'll put that back down again stop that breeze coming through because it's so cold and wet outside um, so yeah I've got him plumbed up now uh, probably gonna paint this creamy dirty creamy colored roller door might paint it black just like the rest of the place gonna remove these posts they're the old gate posts they gotta go now that I've built the new section take all that out and just put a barrier down there stop anybody jumping down and walking down the side of there so that fence will go the gates have gone posts will go this post will go that's the old gate post this all this will go and I've got to build a door steel door that goes on here I'm gonna put a header through here and a clear window section in here and then I'm building a two meter high meter wide steel door to go on here steel frame with uh, polycarbonate inserts and a proper handle and whatnot rather than these gates with the crappy old slider bolt and so on and so forth it works all right you know like <laughs> yeah of course it didn't that time it works all right but 
I want it to be a lot more secure than that with the GTS in there so that just goes on there padlock to secure it at night but not what you'd call properly secure somebody gets in through there they can just open the roller door and get to my car so not happy with that gonna cement this section here one day anyway that's just letting you know about that what I'm gonna get up to this afternoon is I'll come back in here and start building this door down behind the car here I've got this steel I'm gonna make this out of it's only two and a half mil thick steel which I'll make the frame out of and uh, put some hinges on it and build a box section for the door handle mortise so on and so forth okay bit of a run around show you what I've been doing and what I'm up to this afternoon that'll do me for now see you later